Let's go. Well, guys, welcome to the 6 o'clock service. Uh, God has definitely saved the best for last, not because I'm speaking, but because you're here. So thank you for being here. Um, I know it takes a huge commitment, especially on a Father's Day weekend. It's, it's pretty awesome that you guys have chosen to be here tonight. Um, I believe God put something in my heart to share with you guys that I'm really excited about. It's actually one of those uh, messages that's kind of like in the works. Um, if, I like to call it, like, it's still kind of in the crock pot, you know, like it's like it's, it's simmering, it's like it's cooking, and it's really, really good, and I think it's going to be very helpful for you guys, and it's actually becoming one of my favorite topics. So uh, tonight, what I'm going to do is just give you a taste of, of what God has been doing in my life and take you along this journey. So it is Father's Day, so like Pastor Jordan said, you know, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Um, shout out to you guys. It's pretty amazing. Uh, being a dad myself. So I love it. It's like my greatest joy outside of ministry and my wife, of course, um, because kids come third. So sorry, kids. I love y'all, but that's just the proper order. Um, But I'm excited about today. Today has to do with legacy, um, with building a legacy, building the right thing. Um, And I'm going to use one of the fathers of the faith as an example. Now, I am going to speak this from like the lens of being a dad, but this is not just a dad's message. This is something that anybody can apply to their lives, whether you're young or have some life under your belt. You know, it just, it doesn't matter the age. This is something that's for you. So I believe God's going to help you. So uh, before I get into the message, let's go ahead and pray real quick. God, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, I thank you for everyone hearing the sound of my voice. I pray that you would help them as I communicate the message that you've placed in my heart, God. And I pray that you would just do what you do best. Touch the places in our hearts that need your touch, that need your love, that need your presence. God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, guys, thank you again for being here. I'm going to have fun with this. Um, So I'm talking about legacy today. Um, It's one of those things that doesn't get talked about a whole lot in the church and something that God's been stirring in my heart the last few years, especially since I became a dad. Um, and there's a story in the Bible of a man named Noah that I want to read to you that, that, gave, uh, that, that really has helped me understand this whole concept of legacy. Here's the, here's the thing about legacy, is that we're all, we're all building something in our lives. Whether you know it or not, something's being built. Your legacy is being built, and sometimes it's being built, built on purpose, and sometimes being built by default. Uh, and, and what I want to do tonight is help you understand how important your legacy uh, matters, it's, it's like God has done something for you and in you, and he wants to, do in you, uh, wants to do something in you and through you. That legacy matters so much, and I want to talk about tonight, using the story of Noah. So in Genesis, we read the story of Noah. And honestly, I'm not even going to try reading it on my Bible, guys. i got to go see an eye doctor because there's something going on with my eyes. I don't, know what, I, I don't know if it comes with the dad thing, you know, like the dad bot's starting to creep up, so I'm in here like, you know, kind of just sucking it in, but... And my eyes at the same time, I'm like, man, I don't know this whole father's thing thing. I don't know about it, but it's messing with my eyes a little bit. But it's all good. God's a healer. So anyway, I'm going to read off my phone, um, if I can pull it up real quick. Um, I don't know if it's the light on my phone or, you know, just for the record, I haven't done like the large text. I know some of you guys use the large text, and I haven't, I'm not at that level yet. So don't judge me too hard. Don't judge me too hard in this place. So, all right, let me pull it up real quick. Sorry, I did not come prepared to use my phone, but since we're all family in this place, it's all good, right? So if you can, turn to Genesis chapter 6, and I'm going to start in verse, uh, I believe, verse 9. They're going to throw it up on the screens as well, so let me get there, Genesis 6. All right, here we go. Story of Noah, and we're talking about legacy tonight. Your, Your legacy is being built, whether you know it or not. So your life is being built. It matters, and I want to talk to you about that. So in Genesis 6, uh, verse 9, we read about the story of Noah. This is the account of Noah, his family, Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. That's crazy. So God said to Noah, I've decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from uh, uh, cypress wood and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof, Roof all the way around the boat. 
put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, the middle, and upper. Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy everything living that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and, and, and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind, bird and every kind of animal, every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you will come to you to be kept alive and be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the families. So Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. A whole lot of scripture in that, but so much purpose. So much purpose. There's four things that I want to pull tonight. And like I said, when I opened up, there's this whole concept of legacy. It's being developed on the inside of me. It's, it's something that I've, I've been on this journey with God where he's talking to me about it and how much it matters. And when he started this whole like, conversation with me, he took me straight to the book of Noah. Uh, a, a great man, a father figure, a father of the faith, someone who, who walked with God, talked with God, and was used mightily by God. And this whole story, there's four things that I want to highlight that tell us how to build a legacy that goes beyond us. Here's the thing, is that a lot of people are caught up building for material stuff. In our world, we're building for material stuff. Some people get so caught up in, in building on, on the material side of like inheritance and leaving a good inheritance for your kids. All that is great. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not against it. I fight to do the same thing. But what God was starting to show me is can you start instilling faith principles that matter so much more? There's an internal part of our hearts that matters so much more. My question to you is, no matter who you are, whether you have kids or you don't, whether you're young, whether you're married, is what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? And, and what do you want to install into your kids when they come up? It's, I have what I call spiritual kids, kids that I mentor, students that I love. It's like, it's, it, it goes with them too. Like, what do I want in, in, install into their hearts? What do I want them to remember about Joe? What do I want them to know? Not, 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 hey, Joe had five cars, six boats, you know, and a whole lot of money. Like, he, he did his thing. Like, man, he, he lived a great life. Like, no, like, I'm talking about the things that go unseen but matter so much more. Legacy. There's four things out of Noah's life that I learned. The first one is this. Noah was obedient. If you want to build a legacy that outlasts you, that goes beyond you, you're going to have to learn how to live in radical obedience. What is God challenging you to do? What is God challenging you to do in this very moment that you have not done? The crazy thing about this story is that literally Noah had never seen rain. Never seen rain. And here God shows up and says, hey, I need you to prepare a boat because rain is coming. His first response was, that, well, God, what's rain? It's like, what is that? God, I, God aren't you God? Like, why do, why do you want to wipe everyone out? Like, God, God, why are you upset? Why, why, like, who, who ticked you off? Like, why are you questioning the, 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 are the humans that you created? Like, the Bible literally says that God was so fed up. He, was, he regretted that he had created these human beings because of how bad and how corrupt the world was. But Noah, no, he didn't question. He just said, okay. He just started building. Radical obedience. What does that look like? That, that looks like this. God speaks to you and you do it. No questions asked. If God is asking you, hey, I need you to go pick up the phone and apologize to this person because you did them wrong, guess what? No questions. You pick up the phone and you apologize. If God is asking you to give to the church and, and it's hard for you and you wrestle with that tension, same thing. We just obey. If God is asking you to reconcile a relationship at school, same thing. We just obey. If, if whatever God is asking you to do, it matters. Here's, here's what I need you to understand. The beauty about obedience is this, is that your job will always be obedience to obey first, and God's job is always the outcome. Always the outcome. Our step is obey. God's step is, okay, well, let me take care of this now. Let me do this my way. Noah proved through this story how radical he was when it came to obeying God. In order to fully obey God, you also have to be able to just know who God is and know that God is for you. Know, God, know that God has your back, that God is going to fight your battles for you. And sometimes that's the hardest part. So if you're in this place and you're questioning what, I would challenge you to go back to the last thing that God asked you to do and do it. 
A lot of times we find ourselves in these seasons of life where like, God, I can't feel God. I can't hear God. I can't, like, I pray to God and nothing happens. And, you know, I'm worshiping and I don't get the goosebumps. Like, I don't, like, I, I don't know what's happening. Like, I must, I, I must be, just go back to the last thing that God asked you to do. And I'm telling you, that's the thing that breaks the seal open. It, it pushes you forward into the things that God has for you. If you want to build a legacy that so goes beyond you, that impacts the world and the world around you, your community, you have to first learn how to live in radical obedience. The second thing is this. Noah teaches us that he, he, uh, Noah understood and was faithful. He understood what faithfulness meant. He understood what faithfulness looks like. Why do I know that? It's because this, the, obviously the Bible tells me so, right? But, but there's, a, there's this crazy part in this story that I honestly, I don't know about you guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys real quick. Have you ever read scripture and it frustrates you? It's like, so this is one of those moments with God. The second point was like, wait, what? Like, he was faithful? Yes, and then what immediately came after that was how it literally goes from one verse to the next. It goes from Genesis 6.29, I believe it, that's what it was. From Genesis 6.29, the last verse in, in chapter 6, it says, it says that, and, and, and uh, Noah obeyed God and did everything he has. And then 7.1, the next chapter, literally one verse later says, and when everything was finished, I was like, wait, God, what? It's like, time out. It's like, you, you, gave them this, you gave them all these instructions. You told them what to build. You gave them all the details. And then you said it was finished. Like, this makes zero sense. So me being a scholar, like, I didn't go to seminary school, but shout out God, Google, YouTube, all this good stuff. I did my studies, and I, find, I found out that it took Noah over 75 years to build this ark faithfulness. Just imagine that. Imagine like day one, God speaks to you, gives you direction, gives you the assignment, what you're called to do, and you go do it. Day one, you're excited. All right, I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to buy this. I need this amount of wood. Like maybe like I maybe need to call the warehouse because I need a whole lot of wood. Like this is huge. Like it's like he's excited, right? He's like, man, I'm going to do this. Like I got this. This is going to be awesome, amazing, all that good stuff. Like God spoke to me. He said, I'm the only one righteous. Like look at me. Like it's, it was like cloud nine type moment. God is wanting to use you. But here comes your one. Hey, babe, what are you doing today? Babe, I'm going to build the ark. All right, see you later. Year five. Hey, babe, what are you doing today? Babe, I'm still building the ark. <laughs> Year 15. Babe, what are you doing today? Do you want your sandwich? Yes, I do. Where are you going? Building the ark. Wow. Year 25. Year 35. Year 55. Year 65. Year 70, babe, what are you doing today? Babe, I'm going to build the ark. Faithfulness. Can you be faithful with what God has put in your hands? Sometimes we're asking, God, I want more, I want more, I want more. And he's saying, can you just be faithful with what I've given you? Can you steward the kids that I've given you? Can you take care of little Jason, little Ailey? Can you be a good example to them? Can you be faithful? Sometimes we get so caught up on a journey because we forget. We so forget what God has already done in our lives. Noah never forgot. He was so faithful. So faithful. If there's anything that I need you to be faithful to is this, number one, is I need you to be faithful to your calling. You can't be faithful to God if you don't understand why God put you on this earth. Like, it's so hard. The reason why I've gone through hard times and I've been able to endure is because I know what God has called me to do. Yeah. It makes things so much easier. So much easier. But when you're on this earth and you're like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know why I'm here. Like, I, I try this job. This job sucks. I want to quit that job. So I'm going to go take that job. Like, it's like we're just going just to and fro trying to figure out life. I'm telling you, God has called you. God has called all of you to a specific thing. In fact, the, the Greek word for calling means klesis. It's a word klesis, which means this, that God has given you a specific assignment in his kingdom that nobody else has. Nobody else has. Only you. Only you. Ephesians 4.1 says this. Paul said it. I beg you. I beg you to live a life worthy of your calling. What are you called to do? 
Do you know it? We can help you figure that out. We can so help you figure that out. Because I'm telling you, once you have that, it's so much easier to be faithful to God. Can we be faithful to God without it? Absolutely. But I'm telling you, it keeps you building day after day, year after year, month after month. I said the opposite, but it's all good. That's the way my brain functions sometimes. <laughs> faithful. Can you be faithful? Noah was faithful. Here's the other thing that we learned about Noah. Was that Noah didn't build alone. So many times along the journey, what ends up happening? We, we, we think we're building for our family, but we're really not. The Bible teaches us what I learned from Noah's story is that we're supposed to build with our family, not for our family. Catch that. Build with your family, not with your family. In my world, in my, in my profession, you know, being a pastor and building ministry and doing what I love and what I'm called to do, the way I build ministry, can I give you as a secret? It's around my family. We do something called Via High Monday nights. It's, I, it's, we have junior high crew night on Tuesday nights. I'm specific where, where I have these because I want my family a part of it. It's not me against them. It's not me building my thing. It's not me being Joe, building Joe's thing. It's me building with my family, not for them. For them, when you, when you operate in that mindset of I'm building for my family, I'm building for my future, I'm building, it's like eventually that fire is going to die out. Wow. 70 years into building the ark, that fire is not going to be there anymore. You, you start, what ends up happening, we've seen this in our world, you start neglecting the things that you love most. You get so caught up building and chasing something that you lose everything that matters. Legacy. Noah did not build alone. He built with his family. Going back to my profession to just drive this point a little deeper, I've seen this. This is one of the things that I'm so sensitive to because in my world, in the church world, in the things that I do, I've seen too many people chase the dream and lose their family. I've seen too many pastors fall, lose their church, lose their children. I've seen them lose their marriage because of acts that they've fallen into. Why? Because they got so caught up building for themselves and not building for legacy. And I so refuse to do that. I refuse to be that person. This is why I'm so mindful. We got to build together. You got to build with the ones that you love. Don't build for them. Build with them. They matter. And they, they're so caught. If God, listen to me, whatever God called you to do, your family is a part of it. God didn't just call me to the next generation. In fact, this is the beauty about God. He called me to the next generation, then he gave my wife the same dream. Then he put us together. It's, it's the most beautiful thing. If you can just trust God with your life and build for a legacy that will outlasts you, you're going to have to build with people. In this season of your life, many of you are not married in this place. You build with the right people. Who, who's running the same race? Who's running at my pace? Who's, who's after the same stuff? Who's putting God first? Who's seeking the kingdom first? Who's, who's, it's like, that's who you run with. So Noah did not build alone. He built with his family. So point number four, and I'll wrap it with this point. Um, the other thing that we see Noah do is that Noah built an altar. This is the craziest part. This is the craziest part about this story. Why? Because literally, like, it's, like, he's been on this journey for so long. 75 years of building this ark, just constantly building. Like, imagine his hands and his, how tired and worn out he was. Like, just, just imagine how he felt. Like, just getting the story. Like, dude, this is a lot of work. The next, put it this way, it's like God showing up to you, telling you today, hey, I need you to build an ark. And that's all you do for the next 75 years. Some scholars believe it was 100, 120 Minimum of 75. Just imagine. And, and then he, he goes through this journey. He builds. He t then he gets on the boat. And then he's waiting on the boat for over 150 years or 150 days. And then another 40 days that God has on because God has a sense of humor. He just loves doing things like that. You pray, God, I need patience. He'll test your patience. Like, it's, it's pretty amazing. But this is what I learned. It's like he went through all of that. You know, the first thing he does. After the waters diminish, 
after he's able to walk on dry ground, the Bible says that the first thing he did was that he built an altar. He built an altar to his God. If you want to build a legacy that so outlasts you, if you want to build a legacy that you want to install into your kids, into your family, I'm telling you, building an altar will always be a part of it. What does that look like? That means this. It means that every decision that you make, you bring it back to the altar. God, should I move to Texas? Because everyone's leaving California and they're going to Texas for some reason. No, son, you're called to Fresno. God, why Fresno? It's freaking hot. That's what that looks like. God, God, do I buy this car? No, you can't afford it. But God, I'm a youth pastor and I want to look cool. Like, you cannot afford a Mustang, son. Don't buy that car. What does that look like? like it's building an altar and taking all things back to the altar. The altar of God is legacy proof. Legacy proof. You take everything back to God. I'm telling you, your life, you'll have struggles. Pain will come. Suffering will come. But I'm telling you, your legacy will be legacy proof. We'll be like these guys that God talked about. Legacy proof. You bring everything back to the altar. Everything back. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. We're going to kind of wrap this up. But man, I'm telling you, like, there's something special about this story. And I'm telling you, like, I'm not even done with it. This is four points that I got that I'm like, okay, what should I give you guys? And I just felt like that was right for today. But there's something about legacy, man, that matters. And you're not too young to hear about this. You're not too old to, 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 to feel like, man, I just can't do this anymore. Like, it's, it's beyond my time. Like, dude, if there's air in your lungs, then there is time. There's always time. In fact, Hebrews 11:7 7 says this, and I'm going to wrap up with this as the band comes up. I'm going to ask you guys to stand to your feet if you guys don't mind. So what I love about the Bible, Hebrews 11, 7 says this. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Hebrews 11, 7. Hebrews 11, 7. All it is, you know what Hebrews 11, chapter 11 is? That's what we call the hall of faith. It's all the greats. Like God just starts mentioning all these people who did great and mighty things for him. And Noah was a part of that. I wonder, when I get to heaven, years from today, when I'm 100 and something, I want to break the record, actually, 121. God, you got me? When I, I want to ask Noah, I was like, was it worth it? Was it worth it? One verse in the New Testament, ele- chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, was it worth it? I so want to ask him that question. Why? Because all Noah did was built an ark for the rest of his life. That's what he did. Was it worth it? I believe he looked me in the face and said, yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Why? Because my God is so good. And my God is so faithful. The crazy thing about 11.7 is this, is that we we see the end of the story, right? But we don't see the pain, we don't see the suffering. And all of, everything that Noah did was for the sake of a covenant. Hey, I'm going to do this, or God gave him the instructions. I'm going to do this, or do this for me, and then this is what I'm going to do. I promise you, I'm never, ever, ever going to do this again. The crazy thing about that is everything in the New Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament and New Testament is a type and shadow of Jesus. The ark represents salvation. The wood represents the cross. Noah was a type and shadow of Jesus. What I love about that verse in 11, chapter 11, verse 7, is that it didn't mention Noah's shortcomings. It didn't mention his failures. It didn't mention that one time that he got so wasted, so drunk that his kids found him butt naked. Like, like, none of that. That's true. It's in the Bible. None of it. All he said, all God had to say was, this is Noah who by faith obeyed me. He built a legacy. He followed my steps. He put his trust in me. So I don't know where you're at in this place tonight. I hope that encourages you. I hope that sparks something on the inside of you. If you want to build a legacy that goes beyond you, Fight for radical obedience. Fight to be faithful over what God has given you. Fight to not build alone. And fight to always build an altar. 
because that is legacy proof. I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to jump back into worship. God, I thank you for everyone here under the sound of my voice. God, I thank you for all that you've done in this place. You know exactly what they're going through. You know exactly where they're at in their life, in, in the season of life that they're in. You know exactly what they're needing in this moment. So I pray that you would meet their need, whether, whether it's spiritual, emotional, or, or just healing. Whatever it is, God, you see exactly who they are. These are your children. You sent Jesus so that we can have a new covenant with you, God, to wipe away the old so you gave us the new. Because of Jesus, we have freedom. So in this place, God, I just thank you for freedom. God, I pray for, for heaviness to leave people's hearts in this moment. God, those who believe that it's too late, those who believe that, man, my time has, has come to an end, like, I pray that you would remind them in this moment that it's never too late to change the history and the legacy that they're creating. Why? Because you, Jesus, came and gave us a new covenant. One that says, as far as the east is from the west, I don't remember your sins. One that says that when you confess me as Lord and Savior, I make all things new. A covenant that, that comes with the blood, the precious blood that has washed away every single sin, every shortcoming. A, a, a new covenant that comes with the stripes that Jesus bore, bared on his back so that we can be healthy, whole, and complete. God, we thank you for that in this moment, knowing that we have a new covenant. Through the things that you had know what do, God, and because of your radical love for us, sending your only son to die for us. God, we thank you for the opportunity and the ability to not only be used by God, but to build a legacy that honors you. God, we choose to honor you. We choose to honor you with our life. God, we choose to honor you with every single thing that we do. God, you said in your word that whatever we set our hands to do will prosper and succeed, and we thank you for that. God, we're putting your kingdom first. In this place, putting your kingdom first. With every head bowed, all eyes closed, I'm going to do this. I normally don't do this. But if you're, if, if you're here in this place and you just feel like, man, I need to repent. Repent is one of those churchy words, but I'm telling you, all it is is like, man, I, just, I need to get this right. I need to turn away from the things that I'm doing, and i got to move forward towards God and his kingdom. That's all it is. It's simple. If you're in this place and you just feel like, man, there's something about your message, this word that God's wrestling on the inside of me that I, I feel like I need to turn from some stuff and pursue you, Jesus. If that's you in this place, I want you to raise your hand real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. Just shoot it up real quick. I see your guys' hands. I see, you guys, I see your hands. God sees your hands most, most importantly. I'm going to pray for you real quick. Leave your hands up. God, I thank you for these people who are bold wanting to turn away from the things that they've been wrestling with. God, I pray that from this moment forward, that you would lead them, guide them, direct their steps, order every single step. God, make all things new in their life. Show them, God, the things that you have called them to do. In fact, God, I pray that you would reveal your, their calling to them, reveal their calling, their purpose, why you put them on this earth. I pray that you would do that in this moment. As we worship, I pray and declare that callings will come forward, that you would reveal to people as we begin to worship and exalt your name what you have called people to do in this place. God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for the name of Jesus. We honor you. We love you. We worship you. We exalt you. God, we got time. We got, we got time. We, we, don't need, we, need, we don't need to cut anything off in, if you want to move, God. We thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for legacy. We thank you for calling us and choosing us. As we worship, I pray, God, that you would do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name.